Adams for Peace Amok album review. My first in a little while. And it's not metal. Yeah, I'm stepping out of my box a little bit here with this one. This is a group that's, well, a project by Tom York from Radiohead. And he's fronting it with a guy who produced, and he's fronting it and is in the project along with a guy who produced his first solo record. And the project was initially intended to, like, play live songs from that record, but it sort of evolved into its own thing. Hence, this first album by them, Amok. And the way I found out about this was, I just think I heard about it from somewhere, and there's just been a huge anticipation for it by, like, Radiohead fans and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say right here, I've never really gotten into Radiohead. I don't not like them. It's just I've never really tried them out and gotten into their stuff. So what you're going to be seeing in this review is from the perspective of someone who isn't a huge Tom York fan, just someone who's just sort of coming into this, like, blind to his previous work for the most part. But yeah. Um, going to go ahead and start with this review. Um, as with all my reviews, annotation right here. If this video seems too long for you, you can click that annotation, and basically you'll be watching my thoughts on this album, just a shortened version of it, because I always do a track-by-track track list, which I'm going to start right now. Um, first song, Before Your Very Eyes. This one starts off starts off the album with a very sort of upbeat but strange kind of lick going on in the guitars with a couple of electronic beats complementing it, and then Thom's vocals come in, and after that, everything that just comes in just keeps making the song more and more atmospheric. That's an, a big thing you're going to get with this record. A lot of the textures just makes the songs really atmospheric and very immersive. Um, you can just really get absorbed in this music. And one of the things that I noticed about this song, um, maybe this isn't exactly true, from, but from what I understand, um, <coughs> excuse me, Radiohead is a sort of they're like a rock project with like real guitars and bass and stuff like that. And a lot of the stuff on this record is very electronic based. And what this song does, it starts off with like real guitar, bass, real instruments, and then it slowly progresses to what the majority of the album is sonically, which is like electronic instrumentation. So I think it's like, it's sort of a saying goodbye to the old way that he wrote songs and the hello to the new way that Thom York is writing the songs on this album, which is kind of cool. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but then after that is the single that was released from this album and what actually got me into and wanting to listen to this album, which is the song Default. It, it just made me realize I need to hear the rest of this album because I really liked what this song was doing. It starts out with a really dark electronic melody coupled with a dark bass line and then... The song just builds itself up from here, and then Thom's vocals come in, and they just have this huge, like, cavernous, enormous amount of reverb on them that really adds to the atmosphere. And then the song just really builds up to a very emotional chorus, and it's the kind of thing that you can get stuck in your head if you familiarize yourself with it. And, wow, just... Another thing about this song and this album in general is the way the beats are layered and the song instrumentally, like, parts are layered on one another. It's very, very intricate, and there's a lot of care put into how it's composed, and I just think that's, to me anyway, that's a really good thing. But then you get the next song, Ingenu, I think it's pronounced, and this one starts off a bit strangely. It has this kind of jagged, sort of from a melodic stance, not a rhythmic sense, simple melody going on that it doesn't make any sense by itself, but then when everything else comes in, it sort of makes sense. Very much like how The Boy in the Bubble by the artist Paul Simon off his very famous Graceland album, um, it sort of starts out with like a line that doesn't make sense by itself, but then all the instruments come in and it makes sense. To be honest, I don't dig this song that much. Maybe it's because of that 
melody seeming a little bit more simple in comparison to the previous tracks, but there's also the fact that it really doesn't go anywhere structurally compared to where the previous songs really progress through different sections while keeping things consistent very nicely. This song feels a little stagnant in comparison, and there's also this part that comes in towards the end where the drum line gets really spastic and glitchy, and it, it, I feel it's really distracting from... Well, I feel like they might have been going for a um, sort of relaxing mood with this song, but that bit at the end kind of ruins it. Then you get to my favorite song on the album, though, with Dropped. And this song has sort of a slow-moving melody that focuses on repeating one note for a while with a very interesting beat underneath it, and then you just get some really incredibly catchy melodies and sung vocals in this. I love how there isn't much layering in the very beginning, but then right before the one and a half minute mark, it just there's like all the other layers that you're used to from this album really start to just crescendo and get bigger and bigger, and it's like this musical orgasm, sort of. And then it drops you back into the, how the beginning of the song was. I thought that was a really cool execution um, the beats in this song are just especially interesting and well-layered. I feel like what this album has to offer, this song does it the best. This is definitely my favorite song on the record. Then you get to the song Unless. And this one starts off with some stuff from the synths and from Tom's vocals that sounds a bit unnerving because it sounds kind of out of tune, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't feel like... It's like directly hitting any notes. It feels like just a bit out of tune, but then as the song progresses, it gets more in tune. And there's some really bouncy synths that fade in at one point in this song, and I was listening to it through this part for a few seconds before I just realized I didn't even realize I just started bobbing my head along to this song, and if a song can get you to do that without realizing it, that's really good. The I just really dig the groove in this song. It's really tribal, and this is reflected in Tom's vocals in the middle. And it also has a really good melody towards the end. Good song. Nuff said. Stuck Together Pieces is next, and this one starts out with another grooving beat and a bass guitar line, and Tom's vocals complement this really well. Yeah, I said bass guitar. This song actually marks the return of some real instruments, because after that first song, at the beginning of the album, most of the instrumentation was very electronic, but it comes back, and then there's like this inflection that Tom York puts on his voice when he sings the title of the song in, like, the lyrics here, stuck together pieces, it's just, it's, I love the way he does it. He sounds really carefree on this song, and it fits really well. Um, there's a synth that comes sort of close to the middle and towards the end that has a really low, warm timbre of it. It feels like something you could find in a Between the Buried and Me song off Colors, which is like when Tommy Rogers plays keyboard on that album, which is really cool. And of course, the layering in this song is fantastic, like with most of them. Next, you get the shortest song on the album, Judge, Jury, and Executioner. This one's um, a bit m more, I guess you could say a bit more ambient in its nature because there's some like parts that Thom York is doing with his voice that just have this incredible amount of reverb on it. And it even sounds like um, the, the bass line in this song, he could be doing it with his voice just going doom, doom, like that kind of timbre to it, which is really cool. And there's also another cool thing is that there's actually acoustic guitar in this song, and it's really a nice touch to hear something that you haven't heard before on the album pop up on a song like this. Now, since this song is short, it doesn't feel like it has as much room to progress as some of the other tracks, but for what it does with the three and a half minutes it has, it does well. Now, next song, the penultimate song, Reverse Running. This starts out in a way that sounds like it's kind of doing odd time, but it's not. As you listen to it closer, it's doing your standard 4-4 four -four time. It's just a masterfully, I don't know, groovy 4-4, four -four, without sounding like Meshuggah. 
you'd have to go listen to it. <laughs> but this song has another great chorus in it. But right after this ends, there's this really glitchy, like, effect-laden, what seems like a vocal line of Thom holding out this one note, and it's just like, Ugh, it's like really glitchy sounding, and it's quite unnerving. But that's not the only unnerving part about this song. This song's got a couple of uh, grating moments for me. Like, there's this synth sound that's used towards and during the end of this song leading into the final song that sounds like this swarm of bees getting closer and closer to you. And I had a hard time getting into that part, admittedly, because I'm. it just really it sounded like the same kind of frequency that you'd hear if a bee's buzzing in your ear, and I've been frightened of bees since I was a little kid, but um, veering from that, there are just some really cool textures, of course, that are nicely combined on here, and in particular on this track, I really like the addition of a bell sound and a like some piano chord sounds that are used on here. Then you get to the final track, a muck, which is also the title track. Um, the same B sound is used on here to lay out the opening melody, but it's used in a way that doesn't sound like B since it's not held out, and it it fits along really nicely with the beat that's going on. Now there's a couple of background tracks on here that again have a ton of cavernous reverb, and it just sounds harmonically very, very eerie, especially even more so when Tom starts singing over it. It's it's an enjoyable sort of creepy and eerie though. Um and then that opening melody with the the B sound is brought back very well into the structure of the song at about the four minute mark. And then the song just starts to build up to a climax, which actually sort of happens at the very last instant of the album. But it's very well executed, and you really get your head bobbing up and down at this point at the end of the album. So, if if you couldn't tell, overall album as a whole. I like this album. I found it to be a very enjoyable listen, even though I'm not really one to really explore a lot of electronic music. Generally, the only electronic artist I really listen to frequently is the project of a man named Tom Jenkinson, and his project is called Square Pusher. Love that stuff. If I could find more stuff that really sounds like that, I would just be in love with it too, but um... Back to this album, a lot of the textures on here are pretty dark and layered, but everything blends well together. Like, even though some instruments, timbre-wise, you might not think, if you single them out alone and listen to the individual parts, you might not think it, sound, it would sound good as a whole when it's all layered together, because they're so different at times, but it really does. Everything... Like, Tom York just paid a lot of attention to detail on some of the rhythms in the beats and just the way things layer, and it really adds to the experience of listening to this album, in my opinion. If you just focus on the percussion lines at parts, there's, like, intricacies. Nothing, like, some points, things won't repeat the exact same way, or at least it feels like it, and that's just really interesting. And awesome. And speaking of Tom York, his vocals are fucking perfect for this style of music. He's got... Like, the tone of his voice, if I had to describe it, it's very, like, sorrowful at points. Because he's got this really high, thin, like, sad kind of voice. Like, you could almost imagine a couple tears running down his face as he's singing. But it's also got a bit of a... I might get some hate for this... Like, it reminds me of the tone of voice in some gospel-sung music. He's just really got that kind of timbre and sound in his voice, but it really works well. He knows how to fucking write songs, and he knows how to sing over his own songs, and it's just great. This album is just... It's an immersive experience. It's very ambient. It's very atmospheric, despite like some of the percussion tracks seeming a bit like I don't know so intricate that like weird little glitches might seem to stick out I don't I don't know how to exactly describe it but most of the songs on here are over 5 minutes 
And normally when songs get that long, they might seem to like drag a little bit or like they might start to seem like long songs rather than your average three minute, four minute songs. But that's not the case here. Most songs on here felt like that long because they're just structured and progressed so well. And that's generally a sign that I like what I'm hearing, and it's totally true here. Now, there are like one or two points on here where I felt the beat did um, changed up a little early, and it didn't fit with the song, and it was a bit distracting. But that was only on like the track in Genu and like at one other point on the album. So it's not really a big issue at all. For the most part, everything lines up well while still maintaining an interesting sound. Um, now, th another big thing I want to touch on, this album is electronic, but at the same time, it manages to feel very organic despite its sound palette. A lot of the percussive sounds on here that create the beats are obviously synthesized, but they have this really organic feel, especially when you're com they're combined with like things like Tom's voice and just the other sounds that are going on on here. I find it to be very organic sounding because I've listened to other um, electronic albums like I guess I have to point to Square Pusher as an example. His album, Sou Just a Souvenir, feels just like very, very electronic all the way through, despite having... Um, oh, and this is a thing I can compare to Square Pusher, which is awesome. If you have listened to his stuff by any chance, um, think one thing he likes to do is combine real instruments with electronic, primarily electronic compositions, and that's totally what this record does. It's primarily electronic with Tom's, Tom's vocals over all the songs, but there's occasional like acoustic guitar or electric guitar, and it really adds like an interesting diversity, I'd say, to the sound of the album. I also really like the production. It's incredibly clear, and you can hear the finesses of everything that's going on, which is part of what made this very, very enjoyable to me. And if I had to describe the sounds of, like, the moods that this album gives, it's very it's very somber in its moodiness and, at points, very psychedelic, I guess you could say. Overall, I'd say this was a damn enjoyable listen throughout. Strong 8 out of 10. That's the rating I'm going to give this. Strong 8 out of 10. And I'll talk to you guys later.